But wait a minute, if all I need is two loops, and a grocery bag already has two loops. We took a family trip to the beach and we were staying at a place that had a little kitchen area. And so my wife and I went grocery shopping. And when it was time to bring the groceries up, we used a luggage cart. Now with every bag of groceries we placed on the cart, I started to doubt whether we'd be able to do it all in one trip. And so the thought crossed my mind, what kind of knot would I use to add bags to this cart? My initial thought was to tie off to one side of the cart and then mid line, I would create a loop that had a large enough knot up top so that I could take it, hook it on, and then through the handles is where I would carry my additional grocery bags. And so here's what that looks like. The idea is you can take your grocery bags, slip through the handle, go on to the button knot, and then hold it in place until it was time to unload. And while it looks nice, it's not realistic. What are you gonna do? Pull up my video while your wife's tapping her foot in the parking lot? So let's figure something else out. Another option that came to mind was to use a sheep end. I would take one loop, slip it through the grocery bag handles, and then with the other loop, I'd pass through around the back and then underneath and through this loop here that I made. Okay, we pull that tight and that would hold my grocery bag in place. But the problem is, as I have my line hanging and I go to my next section to tie my next bag, I'm gonna be fighting and fumbling with the bag next to it. So maybe not a good one, let's keep thinking. I kept working with the rope, figuring out how I could make a knot that is not so difficult or cumbersome. And this wasn't it either. And while I was working with this, I remembered a knot fundamental that helped me figure this all out. If you have a loop, and you run your rope through once and then twice, as long as you're on the correct side of the loop, you can pull tension in from one side and it'll lock going through the other. There's a couple things you need to keep in mind as you create this tension lock. I'll go through once, I'll go through twice. I need to make sure that the end that I'm pulling on, my tension side, is underneath. And that way when I pull back on my standing end, it clamps down on the rope and holds everything in place, All right? If I pull, I keep pulling, and this loop slips too far down, it's not going to be effective. It'll slip right out. So again, make sure that as you go through, your tension side ends up underneath, and your loop that holds the tension is high up. Okay, so if I stayed on the left side of the loop and that worked out, could I double it up and do it on the right side as well? Let's give it a try. So here's my red rope once, twice, stay to the left. Now I'm going to try it with my blue rope, go through once, twice, and this one instead is going to stay to the right, okay? All right, let's see if we can pull on these two as long as we're oriented nice and correct. It looks like we're holding true on both sides. Now if these two are connected, I would just have a solid loop that I ran through twice. So let's give that a try. So I'll pass my loop through once, pass it through twice, Make sure that my tension side is underneath and that my coils are high up on the loop I started with. There we go. So now we know if we take a loop and pass it through another, we can pass it through one more time and we can get a decent connection. Oh, wait a minute. If all I need is two loops and a grocery bag already has two loops, I probably don't need rope at all. Since I don't have access to a luggage cart anymore, I decided to use a pull handle extension to improvise. And I figured if this works on the way home, it would definitely work on a luggage cart up to my hotel room. And here's what it looks over speed bumps. And if you're wondering how I tied down this pole, I have a video called the wire pulling knot, and it's just a modification of that. So I'll wrap around my pole a few times, 
and then I'll come over the top of my standing end with my free end and I want to capture that standing end and I'll do that by taking this end here and I'll simply go right back through the coils that I just pulled in so there's once we're gonna keep this nice and dressed twice and three times now really you don't have to do it three times you just have to do it enough so that it doesn't slip out okay. now when I pull let's zoom in here so you can see when I pull it'll clamp down on itself and create a friction lock and so from here I'll take the end of the rope I'll go through my anchor point I'll go to the other side of my pole and now I'm just going to take this end and I'm going to thread it through that loop that I created and I want to make sure that as I pull my tension in my tension side is underneath my standing side so as I pull 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 everything starts to tighten up There we go. Now it isn't the best of tension lockers, but it does hold enough tension so that I can tie it off again. So that's pretty good. I'll just take this back through and I'll go through a couple times. And this week we have a trade from Mark in West Virginia. Let's open it up, see what we got. Oh, wow, look at this. Let's open this up. Deputy Sheriff, Kanawha County Sheriff's Office. Man, that is slick. Thank you so much, Mark. I am going to send you something back. And that is this Marlin Spike that I engraved your name on. I hope you like it. And on that note, if you'd like to support my channel, you can pick up a Marlin Spike at my shop, awesomeforsale.com. It's my design, and there's a link in the description. Thanks.